What's up guys, it's Eileen. So today I'm gonna share my camera setup and all the equipment that I use to film YouTube videos. And this is part of a Q&A series on starting a YouTube channel or blog. If you wanna watch my other video on advice that I have for people starting out, then you can watch that right here. It has a lot of good information, but this video is purely technical. So I know a lot of you guys are just starting out, so how I'm gonna structure this video is I'm gonna share the equipment that I use now, and then I'm gonna share equipment that I recommend for people who are just starting out. All right, let's start with the camera. So I literally just upgraded to a new camera like a couple months ago. So the camera that I'm shooting with now is the Canon 80D. And this is like a brand new camera. I got it because of its autofocus ability. It can autofocus really fast and really well, which is great for video. Before the 80D, I was shooting with the Canon T4i for about four years. So the T4i is a great entry-level DSLR. Honestly, for those of you starting out, I highly recommend that you invest in a Canon Rebel series. So I think the new one is like T6i, but you can also get like a used T3i, T4i, T5i, whatever. If you want to invest in a DSLR, this is like a good one to really start with because it can do a lot for being small and compact. But if you're looking to start with a point and shoot camera, which is the smaller ones, then I recommend the Canon GX7. I think that one is like super popular for vlogging. A lot of people recommend that one. Or if you don't have any budget, you can definitely just use your phone to film your videos at the beginning. Just start using like an iPhone. It's great quality already. Better than like the MacBook video quality that I started with a long time ago. Next up, let's talk about lenses. So the lens that I use for vlogging that's on the camera right now is the Sigma 30mm f-stop 1.4. So this is my favorite lens to shoot most things, honestly, because f-stop 1.4 is like an aperture that lets you open it up real wide. It lets in a lot of light, so it shoots well in darker areas, and it allows for that like blurry background effect. The next lens that I'm really enjoying right now and just learning to use is my new 18 to 135 lens that came with my 80D. So I got this because it has like a huge zoom and because this lens is made for this 80D camera because the 80D is great at autofocus and this lens is like really quiet at autofocusing. So if I'm filming a video where I need to autofocus like quietly, then I will use this lens. I'm really, really, really loving it. It's amazing. Because with my Sigma lens, I just manually focus because the autofocus is too loud. Those are my two main lenses right now. I also have a Rokinon fisheye lens that's eight millimeters. That one I used for all my travel vlogs in the past, but it's just not a very practical lens. I haven't found many cases where I needed to use it. So for anyone starting out and who wants to find a good lens for YouTube, I highly recommend the Sigma 30 millimeter one. And another one that's really popular is the Canon 50 millimeter one. That one's really affordable and gives you that really beautiful background blur effect. Next up in my camera kit system are my tripods. So I also got a new tripod recently and it is amazing. It's the Manfrotto, I don't even know what number it is, I'll put it down below. But it's a Manfrotto tripod that has a three-way pan, so it has that smooth video motion. And if you watch my closet tour video, that's the tripod that I used for that video with all those like smooth pannings. But before that, I had these other two relatively cheap tripods. One of them is like this simple tripod that I didn't even buy. It was like at my house because it was my uncle's old tripod for his camcorder. And basically I found it and I used it for many years in YouTube. That one is similar to one that's on Amazon right now and I'll link that below. Another tripod that I started with was this tiny Sony one and it's because it's a table tripod. It was very convenient for me to film at my old house because I could just put this on a table or on my like dresser in front of my bed to film my old videos. But now I have this giant Manfrotto tripod that I love. But yeah, you guys really don't need to start with much. Sometimes I just stack books and put my camera on there. Be creative. If you're starting out, just stack things and make it work. Also, there's tons of cheap tripods that you can find on Amazon. I'll link those below. Next up in the system is this handy dandy remote. So I got this from Amazon. It's pretty affordable, but basically this remote is so essential to like 
kind of like start and stop videos. You can use it to take photos of yourself, you know? It's just so convenient to have a remote so that you don't always have to like go behind the camera, press start and run back here. Because once you've set that focus, like I said, I do manual focus most of the time, then I sit here, make sure it's focused and then I just press the button to start shooting and to stop shooting. It's so convenient. Definitely invest in a remote. So for my videos, I record audio through this mic that sits on top of my camera. It's called a shotgun mic. It's the Rode video mic shotgun. And I, it's about like two or three years old. I didn't buy it. I got it from my job where I worked as a video producer. So perks of working in video. It gets the job done basically because it takes higher quality audio than what your camera takes. But this mic has been causing me problems recently and I would upgrade to another one. Basically, I do enjoy having a shotgun mic on top of your camera for vlogging, but if you're shooting things where you're really far from the camera, then you have to have like a lav mic, which is a mic that you wear on you. I don't have those kinds of mics, so I can't talk about it. But if you're starting out, you guys, you can honestly use your phone to record audio. Your iPhone's mic is actually really, really good. So what you do is you take your iPhone, you open that voice recording app, and you put your phone as close to you as possible, but out of shot. So then you just press record, press record on the camera, and you have to clap. You basically clap so that later when you edit the video, you could sync up the clap from the camera to the clap from the iPhone audio. So after you're done recording your video, you just stop recording on the phone and you send that audio file to yourself, whether through email or whatever. And when you edit your video, you pull in that audio file, you match up that clap, and then voila, you have amazing audio for your video. So if you guys ever watch movies, like they have that slate, that's what it's for. It's to sync up the video and the audio because it's always recorded like separately. Next, let's talk about lighting. So honestly, nowadays I try to use natural light as often as I can. I don't really like to use artificial lights, but I do have two umbrella lights that I've used for my videos, especially in the past. If you go back to my old videos in my old bedroom, I have like two umbrella lights right here towards me and that did the job because I didn't have any natural light in that room. But now that I have more natural light, I try to use it. And natural light is free. So if you don't have a budget, just film right in front of a window. That's the way to go. If you're looking for another cheap alternative lighting, then you can get those paper lanterns. I think they're like five or six dollars each, but just hang those like white paper lanterns in front of your face and you have lighting. So currently I use Adobe Premiere Pro CS6 and I love it. So previously I started with iMovie that's free on the MacBook and then I upgraded to Final Cut Pro X that a lot of YouTubers use. Honestly, Final Cut Pro is probably the most popular program for YouTubers to use, but I switched over and I wanted to learn Adobe Premiere because I learned that that's what filmmakers use to edit films and I kind of got into the film industry at one point. So I was like, oh, I should pick up that skill. So after using Adobe, I think I edit faster on Adobe than Final Cut, so that's my program of choice. But honestly, you can use any program and it doesn't matter as long as you have somewhere that you can edit your videos. It really doesn't matter what you use, it's just how you use it because you have to still use your own creativity. So for editing graphics, like making my thumbnail or graphics for my blog, I use Photoshop. I pr basically use Photoshop for everything. I know that not a lot of people can get Photoshop, so another really popular program that I've used in the past is PicMonkey. And you just go on PicMonkey.com and you can upload your graphics and create your thumbnails or whatever graphics from there. It's pretty useful. And I know that there's a ton of other apps out there that make creating graphics really easy. So go out there and do your research. Lastly, someone asked what kind of laptop I have, so I thought I'd just mention it. I have a MacBook that I got in 2015 that is a 15 inch retina screen. I don't really know the specs right now, but it's a good laptop. I, I made sure that I upgraded to this one last year because my old MacBook died out. I think creating videos takes up a lot of space and it takes up a lot of memory, so you have to make sure that you get like the fastest laptop that you can afford to get.
I also can't forget to mention my external hard drives. I have so many of these. This is my main one right now. It's two terabytes Seagate. And basically when I edit videos, I edit it off of my external hard drive because this has more space than my laptop. And you wanna make sure that you edit your videos on something that has a lot of space and is really fast because you don't wanna you know, have videos that get like malfunctions. It, that can happen where like those green screens pop up. Anyway, I've learned my lesson editing videos on my computer, so now I only edit videos off of a hard drive. And as you can see, I have a ton of hard drives. I think I have four hard drives right now, but this is my main one. All of the other ones just have my old stuff, my old videos on them. But just when buying a hard drive, just buy the biggest size you can afford because you don't wanna get a smaller hard drive and then have to upgrade to a bigger one and then a bigger one. You just wanna try to put everything in one big hard drive, which is the lesson that I've learned in the past few years. All right, that's it for this video. Make sure you check out my other videos in this series, such as advice for people starting out on YouTube and how to start a podcast if you're interested. I'll see you next time. Bye.